Google Cloud Build is an awesome service, right? You can do a lot of stuff with this. You can build a lot of applications, artifacts. You can deploy to whatever platform, anywhere, anytime. But then when you run the pipelines and the jobs in Cloud Build, you will consume time and resources, that is CPU and memory, right? And this is what you're going to be charged on by the end of the month every time by Google. So what if there is a way to optimize and reduce the costs and also get less effort and save the time and reduce the resources that you consume? Wouldn't this be awesome? Well, in this video, I will show you how you can optimize on the time factor in Cloud Build, how you can reduce the build time in Cloud Build by using the caching feature. Now, this is a follow up to my previous video about Cloud Build, where I showed you how you can build and store container images using Cloud Build and Artifact Registry. This is the Artifact Registry report that I have used in my previous video. Obviously, I've been just doing some tests, but I closed or I ended the video when I built this first image. So if you haven't watched that video, I would highly recommend that you pause this video and you watch that video and come back. It's not really that they are really dependent on each other or anything. It's just that I'm following some sort of a progressive approach to this whole thing. I'm starting with you from a very simple application and I'm showing you how you can build a Docker image for this application and store it in Artifact Registry. My goal is to end up by showing you how you can end up deploying this application or maybe any other application later on on a GKE cluster in GCP, in Google Cloud Platform. And this will be done using uh, the best practices and the standards in terms of CI, CD and DevOps. So again, if you haven't watched that, you can go ahead, watch it and come back here. Otherwise, this video by itself is a standalone and you can watch it if you only want to understand how to use caching with Cloud Build. Now, before I show you that also, I would love if you like the video and subscribe and enable the alerts. Or if you found the video useful, at least you can click the like button so that more people can find it easily on YouTube. Now, if you happen to have watched the other video, you will know that I ended that video by talking about a few optimization opportunities, right? These include enabling approvals and securing your build pipeline using binary authorization and also speeding up the build time using the caching. What I'm going to show you in this video is only one way of multiple documented options to reduce the build time. And this one is very simple and very easy to follow. You don't need to change a lot of stuff in your configuration. It's only one or two lines you add in your cloud build.yaml file and you're good to go. And for this, I will be modifying my cloud build, uh, which is found in this repo. So I created this cloud build.yaml file with you previously, and I'm going to modify this to add a simple tag that is dash 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 oh, dash dash cache dash from. <laughs> you should see it on screen anyway. And this is the only modification that I need to add to this cloud build.yaml configuration. And there is another point that I need to highlight here, which is I'm doing this demo and this example on a very small case application. This is my application, a single file or maybe two files, main or main.py and requirements.txt. Well, in some cases, you will maybe have a very massive application that takes forever to be built in a very supercomputer. And this is going to become critical then in this case to optimize the build time. So this is where you will see the most difference. I adopt in my example, I will be able to show you big difference, but I will do my best to demonstrate the changes that will happen. And to get started with this, let me show you my reference point, right? Because again, if you watch that other video the two weeks ago, you'll see that the first build that happened took one minute and 37 seconds, right? That is done from scratch. Now let me do it again. So let me run the pipeline. Let me do one change in the code here to show you again that it will take some time for this to be done. So let me edit main.py doing this on the web because it's a single file. I don't want to do it in, um, you know, on desktop or anything. And 
maybe I can just add another thing which is here like second line uh, okay yeah so just introducing some change for this to trigger the pipeline then we will see the time it will take the pipeline to be executed and the application to be built let me refresh yeah well it did come anyways <laughs> so this is being built and you see it's going to pull some stuff from uh, the re image registry it's going to recompile the changes requirements.txt is going to again push the image and all of that so if you notice the time here it's taking about 25 seconds 27 seconds that has been taken this to be completed which is a good amount of time right i mean it's not as the first time where it did uh, build everything from scratch now with this very quick build time again because this is a very small application there has been no change to the requirements .txt I haven't added any new libraries or anything um, I haven't changed anything in the docker file as well so you will find it the same file with the same image which was th the same base image was caged so it didn't have to pull any new image or anything basically there has been no changes and again because this is a very small scale application maybe it's not the most accurate case but just to demonstrate the workflow for you and then you can expand on your own now let me enable the caching feature in cloudbuild.yaml and to do that i will need to do some restructuring for this which is by making each of these in a separate line just to make it more readable and more easy to follow uh, yeah well i need to edit sorry <laughs> so um let me first of all put these in different lines and i'm just using tabs to reformat okay now the next step here is i need to add another tag on the image so that i can reuse it later on the reason is if you notice here that that is the short sha tag this is a variable thing that changes every time so let me refresh this just to make sure we don't have any yeah so it changes every time and it's a unique tag right it, it does not I, I cannot record it easily even if I wanted to I will add a lot of complexities the easiest way for me is to add a new tag and that tag will be latest so I will just change this to latest and what will happen now is every time this step is executed and a single image will be generated with two tags on it and then it will be pushed into the artifact registry the reason i had to do this is again because the purpose of caching is i reuse the previous jobs results to execute the current job so now since i have an image with a fixed tag that is called latest I can simply retrieve it from the registry and use it to execute the new job. So for the, I'm copying again this value. I'm adding another line where I will add the um, tag or the flag that is dash dash cache from then comma then the image name let me go back to the workflow with you again i executed my or i changed my application the pipeline has been executed first of all it will look at the current image with the latest tag it will retrieve it then it will use it to build a new image with this unique sha thing once that image is built it will move the latest tag from the current image to the new image that was just built and then it will push it to the artifact registry and that's it this is how the workflow will happen now i just need to add one more thing here in the images and i just need to copy this and then i will add a new line i will replace this with the latest tag right and that's it so i will save this 
Now, when I save this, it will start executing the pipeline. However, there is no image with the latest tag on it. I can just manually do it by clicking edit tags, add latest, or I can just leave it so that it will do everything from scratch. Now, when the pipeline will start, it will not find the latest image, so it will recreate everything from scratch. I mean, it will not use caching in this case. So let me save and show you what will happen. Now I have saved. Let me go to history and let me reload if it's not going to show by itself. Well, anyway. So it's running now. And if I go inside, you see it's going to uh, do the requirements.txt stuff. It will build the application and all of that and then it will push it into the artifact registry again not taking long time because in all cases this is a very small application it should not be that much it's completed again 29 seconds right so this is the history list and if i refresh the artifact registry i will see a new image with the latest stack which is just now it has been created now if i go to the application again and now if I introduce some changes to the uh, application main.py so if I edit this and if for example I change the port right so let me do 7070 for example <laughs> or yeah 8081 just to make it more relevant and uh, let me add the comment here updated ports and I will click commit changes. Now the pipeline will be executed again. And this time it will use this image to build the new image. Again, not taking too long because it's a very small case. <laughs> so 10 seconds, um, probably let me go inside it to see. And the build is completed. Now, this was one way of enabling the caching in Google Cloud Build. I hope you found this useful and it did help you something new today. Again, once more, this is a very small application. You may not see the difference in this, but on large applications, you will see a lot of difference and it will help a lot in saving the build time. There is another option that's called Canico, as mentioned in the beginning, which is another process, totally different thing to use to enable caching in cloud build this i will show you in another video obviously and not this one and if you want to be notified when i do that it would be a good idea to hit that subscribe button and enable the alerts and also if you found this video useful i would appreciate if you click the like button as well so that more people can find the video easily and you can help spreading the video on youtube also if you are by any chance a google workspace administrator or considering to use google workspace in your organization or just want to learn anything about Google Workspace, then I have a full course about Google Workspace management and administration in Udemy. There are a lot of details in that course. There is a lot of stuff to learn from this about user management, group management, uh, security management, compliance, email controls, and many things, honestly. You can get it at a discounted price from the link in the video description. Once you do that, you will get it for life and any changes and any uh, new content I add to that course, you will get them for free automatically as well so that you can stay always up to date with the changes in Google Workspace. So that's it for me. Until my next video, stay safe and have a great time.